Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 344, Body Mass Composition, the In-Body Machine, a continuation. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. We are continuing a conversation that we began in our previous podcast about the in-body machine that's used at Dr. Maupin's office and other offices around the country. Uh, the kind of technology that's easy to use for the patient. Just step in. If, if you want to come by and do it, if you're a patient at the office, you can just stop by any time and do it. Uh, and the reason for doing it is it accumulates a consistent flow of data by which you can measure your progress. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much help has getting hormone replacement and particularly testosterone been over six months, a year, two years, whatever? For building it's been. muscle and losing fat. For so we're looking, that's the parameter that, we're looking and for. And that's the goal. I mean, mm-hmm. it, that's what you want to do for healthier aging. You want to be able to keep your muscle and skeletal mass consistent and strong Mm -hmm. so that you can have balance and you can walk without a walker and without a cane and you can move around and and you can have an opportunity to see where your weight distribution and fat distribution in particular are for for like knee problems hip Mm -hmm. problems back problems to focus on what you need to do to get those areas of your body in better shape while you still maintain an overall picture. So we began the discussion in the last podcast and talked about the information that it provides. We want to continue that conversation today, and we want to continue it by talking about uh, the segmental lean analysis and the segmental fat analysis that the uh, in-body machine provides. So uh, body composition is, it's always nice to know how much muscle you have, but not all body composition uh, measures tell you where your muscle is. Mm -hmm. So the segmental lean analysis tells you right arm, left arm, trunk, which is all the way around. It's not just your gut. It's your muscle in the back. It's not just the belly hanging out in front. It's it's, the whole solid mass. It's all the way around your trunk, which is from here to here to your pubic bone. So that's... If you have a lot of back muscle, that'll save you sometimes for that. So... uh, and then they look at each leg. So for me, when I'm looking at this for my patients, I'm I'm saying, well, what are you doing for a workout? Are you using are you using weights? Are you using resistant training? It doesn't mean heavy weights. And if their arms, like I found that my arms were better. I mean, I have a lot of muscle, but my if, arms were if better. If you find that your muscle has gone from up here to down here right. and it quivers and flaps every time Don't you move. Don't look at me when you're saying that because mine's not. No, I'm looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's the issue. I mean, and that's that the information the it gives you. So I looked at, I looked at my, but I'm looking for muscle, not even the fat part yet. Right. So I looked for muscle and my arms had plenty of muscle and not a whole lot of fat. But my thighs, which I always thought had tons of muscle, did not. So I started doing lower body exercises more. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I would tell a patient. Here, you've got kind of Looking a disproportion. Graph, see, you need to work on your legs. Right. And, and basically, many people can have great legs if they're obese. Guess why? Why? They're carrying themselves around. So they have, so if you've seen legs. the 350 pound guy with calves this big, mm-hmm. that's because he's carrying his body around mm-hmm. and he had to have the muscle just to move, Okay. but he doesn't have anything from here up. Mm-hmm. So that's one of those where you don't want to be fooled. You know, people go, Oh, look at that muscle in my legs. That's great. Well, your body fat's really high and you don't have anything in your arms. So that's telling me that it isn't as good as you think it is and that you need a change. And so that helps me having a parameter I can put my finger on and say, this is what this means, instead of just saying, I think you need to lose weight, which is what doctors usually say. Go home, lose weight, like, we don't, but we have a program for it and we help you lose fat. It's like if you have a child and the child brings on a report card and it's got one good grade and five bad grades and you say, son, let's talk about your report card. He only wants to talk about the class he's doing well in. 
Right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> like, oh. So so when we're looking at lean lean um, analysis of mm-hmm. each segment of our body, that tells us one thing, and then they also tell you segments of your body where your fat is, which is always fun. Right. So they they have that same area, right arm, left arm, trunk, right leg, left leg. And then they tell you if you're above normal. Now here, you don't want to be above normal. For for fat. For fat. For muscle. muscle, I don't care how high you get above normal. That's good. You know, as long as you're doing it in a healthy way and you're not hurting yourself. You're not anabolic steroids. Yeah, we're giving testosterone, but we don't give anabolic steroids because they're dangerous. So we... um, if you're coming to us, you're not using anabolic steroids. So in any case, on the segmental fat analysis, men have a different normal for fat than women because you guys don't have like, I mean, this is all gauge per male, female, because you mm-hmm. guys don't have a lot of subcutaneous fat. We've got fat that's underneath our skin. Right. That's why men look more defined and we don't. So right. that's estrogen that gives us the the uh, fat under our skin. So, so our if I'm arms, going through a transgender thing Mm -hmm. then i change my hormone balances so that i start to look rounder and a little but you know you're the catch there is your receptor sites yeah are still uh male if you're changing to female so we have to shut them down so we have to give you a lot of estrogen usually men who are transgender have great legs and great arms what we consider muscly defined they don't get that much fat okay on those areas i mean they're they're rock solid, beautiful, and we, we all the women kind of go, oh my god, I wish I could have how get could, rid of all of this subcutaneous yeah. fat, you know. Yeah. So um, so in any case, that's it is estrogen that gives you that, but men don't have the receptor sites as as to much to do right. it. Right. So that's the catch and everything is receptor sites. So we we looked at Brett's and really I don't, you know, his arms are muscle. Right. Yeah. And he lifts weights. So I wouldn't think that he has very much fat. Now, this isn't always perfect. It says I do, though. Perfect. Yeah. This says that he has 3.1 pounds of fat on his arm. On each arm. On each arm. So it's just incredible. They're both exactly the same, which is unusual. Yeah. And, and I, I just have to wonder about that. Not everything's perfect in this, you know, <laughs> but, you know, I have because you have a lot of muscle there. However, um, apparently I also have a lot of fat. And you have some fat, but 3.1 pounds, I mean, that would be easy to lose if you could just lose it where you want to lose well, it. Yeah, that's always the challenge. And that's what the eye lipo is for. <laughs> and, the tra- and the trade-off would be I would carry three pounds of weight in, in my arms gladly if I could lose it right here. Right. And that's where you carry most of your fat. And that's where most men carry their fat is in their belly. Mm-hmm. So you have 27 pounds there. So that's underneath your skin, but it's also inside your well, 27 abdomen. 27 pounds in here and, right. and around my back. And around your I back. I have a really thick back. Back, fat back? Yeah. So we have a, uh, we use, we call it in surgery, we call it the apron. It atta- There's this apron of fat, re- mm-hmm. yellow, disgusting. I mean, I got so thin in medical school after I started dissecting because it was just so disgusting to see I've all this seen fat. That. Remember that, that uh, display that traveled around the country uh, yeah. with bodies right. where they sliced them up and, mm-hmm. and they had them? I've seen what you're talking about with that apron of fat. Yeah, apron and it's of fat. yellow, and, clabbery. Yeah, it's gooey, yeah. slimy. Um, but we all have some. Okay, so you need it. It's what protects your intestines mm-hmm. from trauma. So you need some. You just don't need anything that thick of fat protecting your intestines. So, yeah. so there's always a reason we have these things, but then we go to excess mm-hmm. and we end up having too much of a good thing. So here... That's where you really need to lose it. Honestly, your legs look great. You don't have any fat on your legs. You know, so you're yeah. looking good. I mean, you don't have well, any. because I'm you're, carrying all this you're weight great. No, that's not what I said. I said more muscle, not less fat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so when we look at this and we find that my, my brain is saying, okay, so we need to lose belly fat. So that means not only do you need to build muscle with... Um, with resistance training, you also have to alternate days with aerobics. Right. So aerobics is to burn, when... To burn that. Right. And you're going to have to cut down on some of the carbs, which means wine at night. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, if you want to lose this, that's how you lose it. Aerobic exercise and not eating a lot of carbs. So that takes time and it usually is fairly slow. But we can speed it up with medications and we do 
at biobalance, but but if you're doing it on your own. Well, but under doctor supervision and under a regular uh, sequence, I mean, coming in and testing for this and mm -hmm. tracking it. But you use things like metformin right. to help you mm -hmm. process carbs. Even mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have to have some carbs, but you need to cut down on carbs as much as you can. Right, but you, some people don't process it properly. So even if we cut down on their carbs, this does their fat area doesn't. You know, they write down everything they ate and they didn't eat that much, and so they aren't processing it. Mm -hmm. So this helps me know when I look at it, a food diary, and then I look at this, huh? Why didn't that happen? That's a metabolic problem. We need to speed up the breakdown of fat. Okay. So that's what we do in several different ways. All right. Then, so there's a term here, basal metabolic rate, and mine is 1885 calories. calories. So men normally my burn more body because mass. you have more muscle. Yeah. That's a good metabolic rate. That's 1885 is almost 2,000 calories laying in bed, sleeping, doing nothing, not moving. That's basal. That's what basal meta metabolic rate means. So if you want to lose weight, you can lay in bed and do do nothing and eat 800 calories because then you're going to be losing a thousand calories of fat. So many See? cans of tomato soup. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just saying that's that's one way of doing it. Yeah. Or you can eat 1,800 calories and exercise for a couple hours a day, and then you're burning 3,200 calories and you only, and, and your basal metabolic rate is 1885, so you've lost that, that in fat. Well, and most of us now have, most of the people we know have like a cell phone or something that can actually track their steps. Mm -hmm. And so they set a goal of 8,000, 10,000 mm -hmm. steps a day uh, and try to reach that mm -hmm. consistently. And if you can do 10,000 steps a day, you can pretty much do what you need to do with this. Well, if you do your steps really slowly, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. Well, I don't, do, you I don't do think I do anything 10, 000, I know. You can do 10,000 steps just sauntering around the neighborhood and talking to your neighbors, which is very good for your yeah. social life, but is not very good for your burning fat. If you don't think you can walk fast enough, come over to my house and walk with my wife. Yeah. I have to jog to keep up with her, and her legs are the same length. She's as like mine. one of these little British stalkers. She just goes. Yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah, even John, who's my husband's <laughs> legs are really long. Yeah. He has to kind of push it to follow up with her. So um, one of the last things that they have on here is um, measuring visceral fat. And that is. And that is the fat we just talked in about your viscera. in your viscera around okay. your intestines, yeah. and it's that apron. So yeah. they separate that out from everything else because. Visceral fat is the most dangerous fat. The fat that's o under your skin on your arms or that wiggles at you isn't dangerous for your heart or for diabetes, doesn't put you at risk, but this apron is what puts you at risk for diabetes and for heart disease. So this so says in the fine print, maintain a visceral fat level of 10 or of under 10. And I'm sitting on 10. You're sitting right on 10. Yeah. So I got to lose a tenth of a percent yeah. to be healthy. You just need to lose a little, but you know, it's whatever is good for you because this is going to make your waistline smaller if you lose if you lose that fat. Uh, that'd be all right. So that's so that's not a bad thing. So we've looked at all of his um, uh, parameters of body composition. And now I want to go back to the muscle fat analysis because that's how I what I look at to kind of categorize a patient into what kind of fat muscle mass they have and whether the, I need to treat them about or not. The, to create a playbook for that person, right. you focus on the muscle fat analysis. Well, yes, muscle dot the muscle, dash fat. Yes. It's a comparison. So weight is on the top of this, of this um, graph, muscles in the middle, mm -hmm. and body fat mass is at the bottom. Okay. So if the weight is high, right. let's go to the first one. Let me just re repeat. So they have they have three bar graphs, mm -hmm. and where they fall, you can draw a line, and it actually it, it looks like a C, it looks like an I, or it looks like a D, depending on the distribution of of those three lines. And so, so that's a quick visual as you glance at your data when you get this print on this one on, on this, this one, one element, uh, and it very quickly can say okay, I, I need to work on this or that or the other. And she's going to talk to us about each one of those. Uh, the, the, that's one of the more 
interesting and usable pieces of data for the non-professional. Right. As I look at this, and that's I see, what you look at. My, my goal is is to have an I straight up and down, so they're right. all in the same range. Mine is a slight C, a very slight C. Uh, okay, but let's tell them what it is. Okay. Um, a C is low or lower muscle mass, mm -hmm. weak or old or without testosterone. So we know you're not weak and we know you have testosterone and he's only slightly in this category. But that's what it says to me is if you're, that means your, your muscle mass is lower than your fat mass and your weight. Mm -hmm. So that's, that makes a C. So that basic, in those patients, I'm, I'm going to say cut out the sugars, carbs, alcohol. You need to get healthy, get testosterone pellets and start really exercising with weights because you need to build your muscle mass. And I'm doing that, except I haven't cut out the sugars and the carbs. Not enough, apparently. Right. I mean, I have a lot, but not enough. And you need to eat. You just right. need to eat less of that. So, right. so then we go to the D body type. That's where the weight and the body fat are even and you have more muscle. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much ideal. That is basically, I don't have to tell those people much, except if you're getting older, which we all are, right. you need to take testosterone to maintain your muscle mass and you need to continue doing your diet and exercise because it's worked. Mm -hmm. So that that's two body types. Then we have, um, we don't have really, let me go to the eye. The eye is normal. Eye is what he's shooting for, which is the body weight is, is Right in the normal range, so is the muscle, and so is the fat. So they, they make an eye. So for my C, I actually have an eye with just a little belly. <laughs> yeah, and a little concave. Yeah, a little. So, uh -huh. so that's basically those, those are, um, if you're an eye, those are people with normal weight, normal body fat, um, and, and normal muscles. So mm -hmm. basically we, we just say keep doing what you're doing. Right. Then if you have... A lot of muscle, a lot of the middle one, mm -hmm. and very little body fat, that's not healthy either. Those are people who exercise all the time. They look kind of ropey. They look, their faces look old because they don't have any fat in their faces. And they are going to get sick because when they're sick, they are not going to be able to recover as easily because we store fat to help us recover in times of illness. I was working out this morning with a trainer and he was pointing out different people in the gym and a couple of them he identified. He said, they're working out like three times a day. And, and that's, he said, they have more than reached their goal. They're not getting any gain. They've gone to the point of diminishing returns. Right. And the reason that they're diminishing returns is they're burning up all their extra fat so they have no cushion for when they get ill. They're also... Not, they're also, there's overtraining, mm -hmm. and that seems to be a, a dirty word at the gym, but overtraining means if you, if you train or, or use your body too many hours a day, then you, you always break down muscle when you work out. Okay. Yeah. So three hours of breaking down muscle, if you're doing that, you need to rest the next day because that next day is when you build it back up. Well, if you do three hours, three hours, three hours, three hours, you're never building your muscle back up. So some people even lose muscle by doing that. And I've had mm -hmm. to say, stop exercising so much. Do every other day right. instead or do your, if you have to one exercise, day weights another, weights day. another or yeah. do the top part of your body one day and the bottom part of your body the next. But you have to have rest to build muscle and then you have to eat plenty of protein. Yeah. Should have some protein before you work out. Should have some protein after or you protein work out. protein drink within the first uh, 20 minutes after you work out. Right. You so know. you can so you can refresh your muscles, give them back the amino acids that they need. Okay, so now we are to skinny fat people. Mm -hmm. And I almost didn't think that existed, but I was I was seeing a new patient and she looked beautiful. She looked gorgeous, but she felt terrible. And and I said, So what do you eat? And well, she hardly eats. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Well, I'm so tired I can't work out. Mm -hmm. But she looks beautiful. I don't know how you do that because I would look terrible if I did that. But that's nor she has normal or low weight, normal or low body fat, mm -hmm. and low muscle mass. Mm -hmm. Basically, she's too sorry. I just said I said it backwards. Normal weight, slightly high body fat, and low muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So she just looks. Deceptive. She looks she looks good but she does not she is not well so she needs more protein and she needs 
she needs to eat more often. Mm -hmm. She also needs to um, have, yeah, more food. Yeah. You can't starve yourself and gain muscle. Um, dangerous obesity is when all of these bar graphs are very high fat, very high weight, um, excuse me, very high weight and normal muscle. Yeah, that's being, being non medical, that's what I call a walking heart attack. Right. We walk around and we see people, and it's like, there's, and you can see them the, the obesity, they're sweating all the time, their skin is pale, they're not getting good blood circulation, they have no energy, they're controlling their breathing, and all yeah. the time trying to get deep. They can't survive, they're not going to. So and they they have a higher risk for heart disease, colon yes. cancer, breast cancer, that diabetes, is. high blood pressure, uh, prostate cancer heart attack and heart failure. So you don't want to be this person. So no. I'd say hurry up, go on a weight loss program, a strict one and start exercising a little bit at a time. Cause you probably haven't exercised for a long time and then get yourself a trainer so that you don't hurt yourself. And the, and the testosterone will help you build the muscle that you need right. to build because you can't build it without the testosterone. You don't burn calories without muscle. That's where you're burning calorie. Your furnace is, mm -hmm. is in your muscle. So you need to build muscle so that you can burn calories. Otherwise, you're, you're just going to stay at the same weight. Um, we have a lot of people who are normal, excuse me, um, low body fat. This is really good. This is athletic body fat, right. bo body type. Now, I have a lot of friends like this mm -hmm. who run all the time. They're above average weight because they've got a lot of muscle. They're above average muscle, but they have low body fat. Mm -hmm. That's athletes. Yeah. They exercise. They know how to exercise. They know how to stretch. They know how to eat before and after. They run marathons. I mean, that's a very healthy type of um, of a combination unless you get too low of the, uh, on fat. If you exercise too much, then that's a problem. And so we have to say, mm, slow down. Mm -hmm. Take a day off or two days off a week. Um, high everything, which is... We talked about that. Chronic muscles. obesity versus uh, yeah. dangerous obesity. Dangerous obesity. Yeah. This is chronic. So you have high muscle because you have to hold your body up. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of muscle. Yeah, in, amazingly in your lower... strong. You see some heavy people that are amazingly strong, right. but you worry about their their burst effect, the, the endurance of that heart muscle when they have to really strain and, and lift something. Right, because they're they're carrying around. It's like me carrying around another person on my back. Yeah. That makes me breathe heavy and makes me, you know, use a lot more oxygen up and right. makes me tired. So um, if everything's high, even muscle, mm -hmm. and usually muscle in the lower part of the body, not in the upper part of the body, then um, then you, you have, it's as important for you to lose weight as it is for the um, dangerous obesity. But it isn't as critical that you do it fast. Right. But weight loss and T would help if you're in the age group. Right. And then the last one, number eight, is low everything. Weak, weak, weak. They yeah. have no muscle. They are low weight, and they have no fat. That and, is, but they think they look good because right. they're skinny. Because they're anorexic. That's kind of the anorexic brain. Yeah. I don't eat anything, so I'm really skinny, so I have no fat. I don't exercise. I don't do – I mean, basically – they are just as sick as the chronic obesity. Right. And they sometimes it's fatal. Yeah, it looks deceptive. Yeah, it, some people, it you know, they, but they're very proud of themselves yeah. that they're so skinny. Right. But it's a psychiatric, psychological problem to look in the mirror and see your knees sticking out sideways and having no muscle and think that that's beautiful. Right. So that takes... Well, it's in treating those individuals with anorexia, one of the things you learn is they have a distorted body image. Mm -hmm. When they look in the mirror and they see a be beautifully svelte person, and me looking at them from the outside is looking at a concentration camp survivor. I mean, right, right. And, and they just deadly. don't see it. They don't, and they won't. They can't because their, their brain chemistry is all screwed up. So you have to get their, have their to weight... Take both. Yes. You have to actually yeah. attack the brain and the view of they have them themselves first. Because yeah. you can't get them to eat if right. they don't no. view themselves as needing to eat. So, so this is this is basically everything we could tell you about body composition and mm -hmm. how to measure it. There are other ways to measure it. This is the uh, safest, easiest, most um, independent where patients can do their own. And this uh, way, way it's ends. expensive for Dr. Moffin to buy the machine, but it's not expensive for you, the patient, to come in and use it. Because it's free. Uh, 
but it, it is a relatively inexpensive way for doctors to know the things they need to know to be able to help you. Yeah, and weighing in doesn't tell you anything because I always weigh heavy for my height yeah. because of the amount of muscle I have, and I've got really right. thick bones. So, me too. That, that's it. I'm big boned. Um, so, so in any case, this gives you a better picture of what health challenges you have in front of you, and we can follow them. We can see when you fall off the wagon and decide to, you know, and, have and that bottle of wine every night. If you will follow it, we can tailor a program that's, that's going right. to help you get healthy. So we, we look forward to seeing you on the uh, InBody machine <laughs> at my office. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.